Yeah, yeah, you've actually, I mean, as far as, you know, a um, a wide, uh, you know, range of different characters, you've pretty much at one point or another either drawn or inked every major comic book character out there. And that's got to make you feel accomplished to have your finger in that many pies. It really does. I was very fortunate. Um, I jumped around a lot, uh, often trying to find a schedule where I could pencil and ink myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but I enjoyed inking other artists as well, and uh, interesting to see other artists ink my pencils, and uh, I just had a, a very nice career. Yeah, and it's uh, something about, I don't know, just, just your generation of comic book artists, those guys that came up in like, you know, um, you know, I would say the mid-60s to like, you know, I don't know, maybe 1980, like before the Bronze Age really kicked in, where you guys had uh, the ability to kind of, you know, get mentored under some of these, you know, uh, titans in the industry. Man, that uh, that old school method of just penciling and straight inking just never looked better than any other era of comics. And, uh, you know, I'm an independent uh, publisher, writer myself, and a lot of the artists that uh, I work with, you know, they just use Photoshop. A lot of these, you know, new kind of platforms but i mean nothing nothing stands out and nothing has the artistry like that old school pencil and ink fail uh, thanks very much i'm glad you appreciate it you know i I've obviously feel the same way there's there's a lot of amazing artwork being done today but like you say they're using computer programs for backgrounds a lot of times um different different things um it's Digital art has is, is just changed the whole business, really. Um, and that's, that's fine for what it is, but I, I really like the old pencil and ink on paper. Yeah, yeah, same here. I actually, uh, for uh, one, well, well, once I get this uh, graphic novel I'm working on done, the next project that I was uh, looking at was going to be more kid friendly. And it was, uh, you know, just kind of going to be my love letter to the Silver Age in general. And uh, I have been shopping around for artists just because I don't want to have that computerized look. I want to have it hand drawn, hand inked. And, you know, when uh, when you have someone, you know, that's into that kind of style of artwork, um, it really shows their dedication as an artist, because nowadays, you know, people can take the easy way out. But when you find someone that's still dedicated and still has an appreciation for that old method of doing things, I mean, I, I feel like it really um, it really denotes something about their character as an individual. Yeah, you know. I don't know. My generation, we weren't so interested in, in looking for the easy way out. We were trying to compete with our heroes, uh, all the people that came before us and set the standards um, way back to Hal Foster on Prince Valiant and, um, you know, Alex Raymond, uh, Flash Gordon, all, all those guys, you know, we, we looked up to them and we're, we're trying to measure up to them instead of just find, finding the fastest way to do a page and and make some money yeah and uh, i guess uh, you know to kind of uh, start off at the beginning of your career um i guess uh, my first question would be for you is what made you you know as an individual want to get into comics was there like a specific character that kind of resonated with you as a kid were you uh, more into comics were you more into like the pulp novels and then later kind of developed into it what was your uh, first uh, inspiration for wanting to get into that business you know, I never intended to be in the comic book business. I wanted to have my own newspaper comic strip. Uh, I'm more of a humor artist and <clears throat> actually submitted a newspaper strip about a humorous uh, private detective named Tom Nosey uh, to King Features back when I was 19 and got rejected for good reasons. <laughs> it was pretty yeah. amateurish, um, but I was that was my goal either that or do some work for Mad Magazine. Uh, my hero was Mort Drucker doing the TV and movie satires. Oh, yeah. And maybe end up at Disney working in the animated movies. Um, I, I mean, I read Superman comics mainly as a kid and uh, Archie comics, but I was not that into comic books. I, I was more into humor stuff, like I said. Um, but I was stocking shelves at a grocery store, um, and this guy I was working next to was a huge Marvel Comics fan, and when he found out I could draw, 
He said, oh, you got to work for Marvel Comics. And so I thought, well, you know, maybe that would, that might be a, a place to start. And so it's really just because of that guy, um, I sold my car, finance a trip up to New York and try to start a career. Uh, and it was the time of the uh, New York Comic Con in the summer. And, um, you know, I submitted my work there trying to uh, get some work. And I was so naive, you know, I, I, I figured, well, I'll just show them my samples and they'll say, oh, you're great. Here you go. Here's a Spider-Man script or whatever. <laughs> and of course, it didn't work out like that. I got rejected and uh, happened to meet another artist, Pat Broderick, um, who also uh, was in my actual hometown arts, art class in, in Tampa, Florida. He was a year younger than me, um, so we didn't really socialize, but I knew he was in the class. But I bumped into him at the convention and we became roommates and uh, he met Neil Adams uh, at DC and introduced me to Neil and Neil got me a job in the production department at Marvel uh, doing uh, basically paste up and mechanicals is what it used to be called lettering corrections. Um, I actually taped the page numbers onto the pages of art. So I figured I pretty much started at the bottom and worked my way up. Wow. I mean, that's a heck of a recommendation, though, being able to, you know, get that uh, foot in the door through Neil Adams, because, I mean, you know, as far as like, you know, Batman goes, you know, there's no one uh, more prolific, um, you know, as far as, you know, kind of their take on the Oh, I mean, I guess, I guess if you wanted to talk about like the gritty reboot with like Frank Miller and that, but like, I don't know, as far as like classic Batman goes, Neil Adams is always the first guy that comes to mind for me. Um, so I guess, uh, did you get a chance to kind of uh, meet Neil, get to know him when you first started socializing? Or was it more of a uh, more of a business, uh, you know, mentor mentee kind of relationship? No, he wasn't really a mentor, uh, but I rented studio space with Neil uh, at Continuity Studios, mm -hmm. where he did a lot of advertising work and also his comics work. And he would rent out little office space, uh, drawing table and, and what have you uh, to various artists. And so I was just uh, renting space there and looking over his shoulder as he worked. And Russ Heath was there and I was looking over Russ's shoulder and Dick Giordano. Larry Hama, Ralph Reese, um, a lot of comic artists, uh, Jack Abel. Um, I could watch them work and pick up some tips. And um, it was a, a great way to actually get my foot in the door of the business and meet people and uh, just uh, see how, how the good stuff was done. Wow. I mean, ju just with the artists that you named, that is so much talent in one studio um so was uh, so was that studio that you uh, were renting out with these guys that was uh in new york after you had uh, made the transition up or was that still down in tampa no it was in new york uh you had to be in new york at that time to work in the business basically all the dc and marvel uh charlton all the companies were in uh new york city and it was almost, I, I don't know anybody that was getting work that was outside of New York really at that time. And so this was 1974. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I just uh, got a room with Pat, an apartment with Pat, and then was renting space at Neil's for, I don't know, about three or four years. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, you really, I mean, instead of going like, you know, the traditional like art school route, you actually got hands-on experience working with, you know, some of the, um, some of the most active artists of the day. So, uh, so I guess, uh, you know, when you were like working with them, was there any uh, specific artists that kind of like really took you under their wing and kind of showed you how to do certain things, how to, uh, you know, shade with certain inks, that sort of stuff? You know, I started out in the production department at Marvel, and at that time, Mike Esposito, a longtime inker for Marvel, was sitting like two feet away from me. Frank Giacoya, another longtime inker, on the other side of me, and uh, they would, you know, talk to me and uh, talk to me about the business and about inking. And Mike Esposito actually said, you know, you can learn to be an inker faster than you can learn to be a penciler. You know, because at that time I was a humor artist. I, I didn't know anything about the dramatic comics, 
hardly knew who Neil Adams or Jack Kirby or John Romita were. I was, I was more into Mad Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, so I started doing uh, inking backgrounds for Mike Esposito and being right there in the Marvel office, I met Al Milgram and Klaus Janssen, started doing backgrounds for them. And like, you know, a month or two later, uh, I got offered my own inking jobs and my inking career kind of took off from there. And that's when I read Space Over at Continuity with Neil. And Neil taught me a couple things, uh, basically just to kind of slow down and take care with each line that you make as an inker. Um, I don't remember him teaching me specific stuff too much, but he would um, just look at my stuff and either nod, say good job, or you know, not say, not say anything. And he never he gave he never gave me a bad critique the way he has a lot of other people. Um, so I was I was lucky there. <laughs> I mean, well, well, that's good. I mean, I don't know because like I feel like uh, that's one of the things that kind of um, I don't know. I don't want to call it a negative thing because some people definitely need a very strict critique to improve. But I mean, I've noticed that uh, you know, particularly like the con scenes, you know, a lot of like these you know, up and coming artists will you know go up to uh, some of these more established artists, you know, looking for tips, advice, how to get into the industry. And uh, you know, granted, it's a good portion of it is just because they get asked that question and to look over you know portfolios over and over and over again. But man, you get some of these artists that just it's almost like their critiques are out for blood you know what i mean you're never gonna yeah. make it in this business look at that look at that that's amateurish and it's just like no i i get it but you know you got you got to remember that you were once in their shoes and you have to kind of you know work with them and you know uh be uh be strict in that critique but also you know kind of be encouraging at the same token yeah, I try very hard to do that. I've, I've critiqued a lot of people in, at shows and I always try to, to give them as much advice to get them up to that next level as I can. I'm not out there to make them cry or to send them home discouraged. I'm trying to make them see what they don't know and what they do know. And I point out what they do know and what they're doing well. Um, but most of the time you gotta make them realize they really need to learn anatomy. You know, they really need to think about composition and where they're putting things. And uh, they really need to look at what other artists are doing instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and just start everything from scratch. Try to kind of emulate your favorite artist at first. And then your own style is gonna grow out of that uh, because you're not that other person, you're who you are. Your own style is going to come out, but um, it's the fastest way to learn is really to try to copy someone else.